It's the Wayne County Football Show with Marshall Wood and head football coach Jack Hankins. Brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank. All the information you need for Wayne County football. Welcome to the Wayne County High School Warrior Football Show, everybody. Tenth edition, ten shows in, Coach. You having fun yet? Uh, we're having so much fun, we don't know what to do with ourselves, do we? <laughs> we don't even know whether to turn the, turn even, the recorder on or what. We don't or not. <laughs> Take two. Take two, yes, sir. <laughs> All righty. Take two. Let's uh, let's uh, look at what we talked about last week. We've been talking about the, cost of the mm-hmm. cost of the game, Coach, and it's an expensive proposition, as you know better than anyone. But let's recap what we looked at last week in terms right. of what it costs. Sure. Guys wear $1,000 a piece. Items it takes to play, $850 for footballs. Technology, $2,500. Food, $1,000 a week. Coach, we just hitting the, the, the highlights right there, and we're looking at $110,000, $110,000 a year to equip and to get these guys on the field. Yeah. If you're running 100 people in your program, you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And, Marshall, this what we what you just mentioned, that's just the – necessities it's not the bells and whistles to anything Mm -hmm. that's just what we need to play you got to equip your players got to have got to have the balls to play with you got to have the food to feed you guys um you know we're not talking about travel outfits we're not talking about different types of things so uh yeah it's 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 tough and um i'm telling you it, it costs money to run a first class program and i tell you we are always just you know, battling you know, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Just the revenue sources, yeah. you know, and our, our revenue and our streams of income, and um, you know, talking about football, it'd be easy just sit and come in here and coach football, but you better know how to coach football. You better know how to manage uh, a big budget, probably you know, quarter million dollar budget. Which I know there's these companies around here run million dollar budgets, but you know, if you you can't handle something small, you certainly certainly can't handle nothing big. Right. Uh, you better know how to interact and sell your program to college coaches. So, you know, during the, the head coach role, it, it, you really got a big umbrella that says head coach, and, and probably most people think that it's just coaching football, but it's not. It's dealing with a whole lot of different things. You know, you got to deal with it, and you got to you got to manage it well to make it a successful program so it'll run like a – like a well-oiled machine. Yeah, you know, that's, and you talk about it's like run, it is like running a business because, you know, you got the season, but you're 365, 24 right. 7. It is. As yes, a, it's, a, it's, it's a CEO position it as is. much as it is anything else. And, uh, you got to do it all, but now listen. These numbers we're looking at too. I want to point this out. I, you, you, you talking from experience. I'm talking from internet research, and these mm-hmm. are numbers. Your your personal experience on baseline expenditures pretty much matches up with what the articles on the internet about how much it costs. So sure. these are not pie in the sky, and these are not extravagant numbers. No, it, it's not. I haven't. I haven't. I don't think I've seen your articles, but you know what? Wherever you got it, you you were right on. Uh, yeah, well, you were right on on that. Well, huh? you know they got an old saying: "Blind hog finds an acorn." I tell you. Yeah. You Y'all talk about that in Alabama. Every now and then. <laughs> we got some old blind hogs over there running around. Well, now listen, you know, we talked about how much it, it and this again, this is all this is all high school football expenditures that are raised by the high school and by the football team. This is not stuff that we get from district. Our district does their share and more with facilities and stuff as that, but this is just getting them to, on the field to play. Now, how do we, you know, we talk about the expenses. Now, what kind of revenue sources do we have to combat this or to attack this? Sure. All right, well, the number one thing, Marshall, the number one thing and the number one way people can help is come to the games. you got to come to the games. Of course, as, as a parent or as maybe you got a, a nephew or somebody playing, you, you would hope they would be there supporting that young man, whether he played a little or played a lot, because mm-hmm. that young man has earned the right to be on the team if he's dressed out. Um, he earns that, he earns that, that support. But your ticket sales, that is our number one <laughs> revenue stream. Yeah. And what has absolutely crippled everybody probably in the southeast is, is dealing with basically, Marshall, it's not just one year, but really two years, if not more, of, of the COVID and I would say the just the, you know, people not wanting to get out anymore, you yeah. know, and, and it's easy. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, it's easy to sit at home listen to it on the radio. Yeah. You got such a good radio broadcast. <laughs> people don't we want do to come to the games. We do all we can to run them back, brother, I promise you. <laughs> So you got your radio, you got you know your delayed or you yeah. know, your live stream stuff, whatever's delayed or live, and you know that that really 
people coming to the games and getting their ticket at the gate, that's the biggest thing we have to combat our outgoing um, expenditures. That that ticket sales is our number one revenue stream. That Marshall, that's probably, whew, I would say upwards to 90%, if not more, of our total budget is what we make in gate revenue. Wow. Wow. That's and what you, you can see. On. That's you what can you see. count on. Right. And, you know, I've heard it. You've heard it. You know, the stands have not been as full. And let me tell you, it's not just here in Waynesboro. We dealt with it in Thomasville. We dealt, everybody's dealing with this around. Everybody mm-hmm. is. So uh, when we can get more people in the stands to come support their high school athletes, man, it's, it's, it's inc- look, it not only makes an incredible atmosphere, but it pays the bills. Yeah. And that's, that's, what's, that's what's needed. And, that, and that's, that's we got to get our people back in the stands. You know, I want to address that too. And, and I've talked to some coaches around the state. And, you know, I remember when, when one coach here that moved on, Marcus moved on, and I talked to him a couple of years after he'd gone over to pedal. And I was talking about our attendance was down. He said, don't, don't be discouraged. It's everywhere. Yeah. And this was 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. He said, it's everywhere. And we've seen it here at Wayne County, but we can see it. You know, you all you got to do is look at the stands and you sit on the visitor side too. And where we go to play, mm-hmm. it's not just here. There's a trend. And somehow or another, we got to figure out a way. To, mm-hmm. to buck this this trend and get people in the stands at Wayne County. We can't worry about what happens at Pedal, or we can't have to worry about equipment. Or That's water. right. We got Wayne County people. <clears throat> we got to get these folks in the stand and set the standard. We set the standard for so long, so I'm preaching a little bit. I'm mm-hmm. going to back off. So we talk about 90% of mm-hmm. our budget comes from ticket sales, which we've got to have. All right, wh- what, what else? other types of revenue right. sources well we do different fundraisers throughout the year um we try to do one or two big ones the thing about it, you don't want to always be having your hand out you know and we want the kids to get involved so they have a vested interest in our program too so mm-hmm. there are different fundraisers we do but you know marshall there's really a, a there's not a limit per se but you can only raise so much with your kids helping you you know um so you got fundraisers you got different type of advertising <laughs> um we hadn't done this in the past we're going to do it a lot more here you know businesses can advertise and they can buy their ad sign Mm -hmm. a a a physical sign on the scoreboard Mm -hmm. that was one of our biggest fundraisers in thomasville people wanted to be on the scoreboard because that's where everybody's looking you know yeah that's a great place to be um you know and again in waynesboro nothing really pulls more people together than a friday night football game that's the way it should be amen that's good advertising we have fence signs and, and different things different ways you can advertise and then our boosters our booster club you know which we have a a football booster club you know that it's kind of divided up you know um most most schools do it that way and and what our booster club with football just since i've been here in the the short time that i've been here they have really been the ones responsible for the uh, program Mm -hmm. on friday nights you know different I've seen schools do it a hundred different ways you know the band may have the program football has concessions we're here the the you know, the band has all the concessions, which is a good deal, and, mm-hmm. and the football has a program. And, and different people do it different ways, and that's the way it works here, and it works good. Um, so our our booster club is really responsible for getting the ads and getting the program sold. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, there are costs with the program, but you still can make money off the program with your ads and all that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So mm-hmm. that's, that's really our only revenue sources we have with the bulk coming from ticket sales yeah which happens one time a year in the fall and that's it yeah yeah you know one thing i want to point out <coughs> excuse my cough this is a fundraiser this show absolutely you know people need, that yeah. people that listen we got mm-hmm. sponsors you know that make this mm-hmm. possible you hear them coming in the show you know and that's one thing we want to do you know and uh and another deal we do is uh, I'm, I'm doing a plug here for what, you know, with WC Web TV is mm-hmm. a deal that we put together. Mm-hmm. You know, and historically we've been raising so much money. The way it works is like this. We get out there and promote the games, promote the program, collect the money. And for the past, what, 12 years, we've been giving the money to the school district, Wayne County School District. Mm-hmm. The school board just recently, this January or February meeting, has decided to let us give that money to the school, which will come directly to the football program mm-hmm. now. 
And so that's probably anywhere from five to $7,500 mm-hmm. a year. That'll right be a there. big help. Yes, so sir. that's something, that's a way, you know, and so when you listen to Coach Hankins speak and you listen to me speak, there's opportunities here that we're talking about for you to be a part of. You can call Coach Hankins and he can tell you how you can be a part to help support this thing. Uh, you can call me, you know, with the WC Web TV uh, venture, and you can be involved in it too. 100% of that money comes to work of football, but I digress. Uh, yeah. You just go back, you know, something we didn't really hit on a lot, and it just hit me here. And um, we're okay on time. Oh, yeah, we're doing okay. good. Okay. Uh, ex- an expenditure you and I really didn't hit a lot, but Marshall is something we use every day, and that's our weight room and weight equipment. We hadn't even hardly hit on that, <laughs> and that's 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 a big deal. That's a big deal, and that's that's how we're gonna get to being puppies to being big dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you take a young man and he gets to be like. Uh, a really strong man by the time he's into the program, and we forgot the cost of that too. So you add that in there, it really does push the cost up. You know, the district plays for the house. Yeah, pays for the house where the weights go, but the district, the program pays for the weights. Yeah, I know we ordered some new weight equipment, um, yeah. just some things that we needed to help us. You know, but you're always going to need bars and just the maintenance. You know, general maintenance yeah. things. So yeah. I, that just hit me too. I know we didn't talk about that yeah. expenditures, but that's part of it. But you know, our revenue sources are very limited, but they're also opportunities for people to help. But, man, it'd be great to get folks to the games. Yeah. Ticket yeah. sales, number one. Yeah. And that's the way it is with all the major colleges. I know they have donors, and I know they have big butcher clubs. And I know we don't have a 100,000-seat, you know, capacity stadium, but these big these college programs, think about how much money they make through yeah. ticket sales and yeah. people having, you know, people in the stands. So. Uh, it's huge, man. It's you huge. take a hundred thousand ticket holders, a uh, hundred thousand times anything is pretty yeah. good. <laughs> it's a pretty good number. It's a pretty good number. Uh, two, three, <laughs> ten, twenty, thirty. I'll, t- I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. It looks like are we pretty good? We've we've talked about the expenses last week. Recap this week. Mm-hmm. We've looked at the revenue sources. Uh, anything else we want to look at on revenue before we take us a quick break? I think we're good. Let's okay. recognize these good sponsors that help make this possible. That's that's huge. You see them around town. You know who they are. You can listen to this show. You see who they are. You can look at War Eagle Football Facebook page, see who they are, and then to follow the radio. Let them know that you appreciate what they do. Coach, right now we're going to take a break to hear from some of our sponsors that make all this possible for us and help fund this thing. Absolutely. And we're going to take this break and we'll be back right after this word from our sponsors. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators. Circle C now sells Exmark mowers with full service and parts for Exmark. 
there's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive, open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5, and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. Welcome back, everybody. And again, we sure do appreciate our sponsors, uh, don't we, Coach? Yes, sir. Without them, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And I love talking with Wayne County football. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let's turn our attention now. We've got the cost of the game tied out. Everybody knows what we need to do. Let's turn our attention to our spring schedule. You know, spring is busting out all over. Uh, we got football going on. Talk to us about spring, and let's begin at the beginning. Let's look at, at what's up. First, and I believe this may be the eighth slash next year ninth graders. Let's That's talk right. about that bunch and what's up with them. Okay, well, we so what we got this week uh, on Thursday at five o'clock in Meridian, our, we're going to take our eighth graders up there, and we're going to play just just a game for those guys, Marshall. Just a, I guess a a preview of our freshmen for next year, and it's been difficult. Um, let me tell you, we've had to. The weather delays. We've had school, you know, two times schools been canceled. We, we've we've been battling yeah. um, just <clears throat> practice time. Uh, yeah. That's that's the hard. You know, Marshall. Here's the thing, and I'll talk about. We'll talk about this probably on another show. But practice is the most important thing we do, and I hope everybody out there hears me. It's got a child in the program. Practice is the most important thing we do, and we have yet to to wrangle getting these kids at practice a hundred percent of the time. You know, if I told you something in your business, I know you got your hand in several businesses, but if, if this or if X or, or whatever the variable is, if that was the most important thing to your business, you would do that on a daily basis, right? <laughs> right. That's the most important thing to our football team, and we have yet to wrangle that in to be, that's got to be on the forefront. We've got to have people here. Now, you can't control the weather and you can't control council. You know, you can't control that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, just getting them here, I know that they're, they're hard. They can't drive yet, so it's hard on them. They're really reliant on somebody to get them here and pick them up. Mm -hmm. But uh, practice is the most important thing we do. And we, we've got to we, – we've come a long way with the varsity guys, but we still got to fight that and we still got to – we got to have them here because – Without practicing how in the world can you know the game plan or know what technique or know you know it's pro it's scientifically proven we'll just say it like that that if you're at practice you get better it's kind of like <laughs> and this is this is proven and you can read any major educational journal you want to read the more kids are at school the better their grades are the better their ACT is the better their SAT is the more kids are at school. The smarter they become, that's pr that's proven. There's data to back that up. All Practi we got to do is show up. Just show up. <laughs> pra practice is no different. But we've been going through our eighth grade practice. Um, we got a, a talented group. You know, here's the thing, Marshall. You got five different middle schools, and we got to get them all tuned in on the same page in really a limited amount of time. You know, because it's easier with the varsity because now they know the program. Now they know what's expected. Now they kind of know the plays. You got to think, we're taking – they've had five different offenses, five different defenses, and in a short amount of time we're putting it all together into one. And I love that. I love the challenge for that. I just love that these guys are going to get to go play and hit somebody else, that we just don't have to hit each other. You know, you kind of establish your pecking order yeah. when you play just the five teams play each other. Yeah. Now we get to go see somebody different. I mean, I'm more excited about that yeah. and to see their techniques and see what they've learned more than anything else. This is bigger than winning and losing. Don't get me wrong. They keep score. We want to win the game, okay? Yeah. Um, but I want to see these, these young you men. You want to win? I do want to I win. I never really would have thought that you wanted else. to win. Yes, sir. <laughs> and no matter whatever we're doing, if we're taking our math test, I want us to have the highest math score. I want to win at whatever we do. I want to be in the habit of winning. Yes, sir. If yes, we're going sir. outside throwing horseshoes, I want to beat you. I want to beat you on that. You hear me? I want us to be in the habit of winning. I, I can see your eyes. These folks are really, I, 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 you mean it. I can tell. Yes, sir. But, but listen. Uh, yes, sir. Eighth grade. Now, you maybe messing up your chain of thought, but is it important? I mean, you're coming from five different schools with five different philosophies, five different offenses, five different things. Is there any way to coordinate that at the junior high level, or you just let the coaches run at their own? Well, you, 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 yes and no. You know, the main thing, Marshall, because here's the thing. you can. Where I was meeting with some of our eighth graders about those plays you see there on the board. Um, 
just just last week. You know, probably the play, you know, a trap is a trap no matter if you're here and you're in yeah. Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. You know, the smash combination route is a smash all the way up to the NFL level. Yeah. The main thing is terminology and formations and, you know, just getting used to how we do things and how they're going to do things as a freshman coming into the high school. Yeah. Um, you know, it's easy to blanket it and say, well, everybody ought to be running the exact same offense. Yeah. You know, all five minutes. Well, That'd be great if we all had the all five schools had the exact same talent. You know, some schools may not be built for that. And this is the way I feel about these middle school guys when they're in middle school. You want them to play the game and have fun and compete and win. And they don't want okay, you got to run this offense, and they're not built for it. And then they get their heads beat in the whole yeah. time. That ain't very much fun. Who wants to be a part of that? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So main thing is terminology with formations is the biggest thing. Yeah. And, our, and our middle schools help us with that. They're, huh. they're doing some of the same. And some of them are doing some of the same plays and same yeah. format. Terminology is such a big thing. You know, yeah. we want to call trips right, trips right. And, yeah. you know, if, if you got the same terminology, it gives them a head up coming into the program. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's the way you deal with that. See, we didn't get to do I was You know, we didn't get in here to yeah, what, what, March or a little after. We, we kind of had a lot to do. and. We didn't, with COVID going on and the schedule being not a regular school day schedule, you know, we did not have a chance to do this last year. And I'm, I'm so glad we can now. Um, who, is, who is your quote unquote ninth grade football coach? Is it you or is it somebody else? Well, it's, let me tell you, it's all of us. Okay. It's our whole staff. We coach our ninth graders and I, I our board does a great job of letting us, we could go out and hire that. You know, those are the guys that we're going to have in our program. I'd rather have our hands on them, and we coach them, and we teach them our way and our keys and our reads. And, Marshall, you can get a lot of success through stability. And you hear if they're a linebacker, they come in there, they were coach Fred McCann, okay? They're going to hear it from him and his way and one way, and they're not going to hear it from four different linebacker coaches. Yeah. You know, and so I think that's important, uh, that stability. And, I, and I've, I've seen that firsthand, stability, breeding, success. Mm-hmm. and. And maybe guys not getting to play to their senior year, but but they've been in the program, they've done it, and they're 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 kind of they're really really good with their technique. Mm-hmm. And by the time they're a senior, they get to play. And some guys are just super talented, and they get to play earlier. So I I think it's critical that that we have our hands in that, and we we teach our guys the way we want to teach them. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm I'm all over the board. You ought to know me well enough by now. I know that I'm liable to run in a different direction at any time. I'm liable to spring. You kind of like rabbit hunting. But, <laughs> yeah, but I'll circle back around. <laughs> uh, you're talking about the getting the people to practice. One one thing that that a disadvantage that we got here, if there is one, is the geography of the county, because this no is a doubt. big county. I think it's the third largest landmass county in the state of Mississippi. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong on that, but you can drive a lot of miles from one corner of this thing to another. So with these kids that can't drive, and even kids that don't have vehicles, how, how do they even? That's a that's a logistical nightmare. Even getting them here it and getting is. them home. Log- are there any special provisions for this, or are no they on special, their own? They are no special provisions. Well, like we are, as a coaching staff, I think we've took kids home every day this past week, yeah. um, and that's been anywhere from State Line to <laughs> out from Beat Four to Shibuta. I mean, we we go all over. But you know, you have a couple of really really outstanding parents that you know that step out there and, and pick up two or three i know yeah. with our varsity kids we we kind of i guess you know it's, it's the old school carpool kind of thing yeah. you know we have several kids that ride together and yeah. um that's that's been the best way and the easiest way to get people here kind of yeah. know what groups from where and, and who's going and who can catch a ride with who now hang on tight we're in like a we're rounding the curve we're going another direction again all right. already all right let's talk about your team what are you seeing out of this bunch of this this that are in the eighth grade that'll be your ninth grade team? What are you seeing? Any you know anything get you excited? Anything concern you? What you got? I, I can see we got a, a good group of linemen um, that we have good size. With that said, we don't know how to come off the ball yet, mm-hmm. full speed, and with that reckless abandon, we're still a little tentative. But that be that can very well be because all the players are new too. So yeah. we're thinking a little bit up front offensively. Yeah, we got some great size guys. Got some great size um, on the defensive front, and we got some couple of guys that will just flat and get after you. Um, that's one thing I noticed. We ran. I don't mind telling you, we we ran a jet sweep a couple of times during practice, and uh, we had two defensive ends that hawked us down from behind. <laughs> Now, we're not running it right when the DNs are hawking us down from behind. Those guys are giving a relentless pursuit to the football. There's some really, really 
You can't co- great, can you coach that, or is that just innate? Well, I think it's innate. I think you work on your pursuit drills and you work on your angles, but we have guys, you know, that effort and their heart. I, I, th- I think non-effort and effort, I think it's either allowed or, or tolerated, the non-effort thing, and I think that's why it's good for them to get around us and they can see that we're, we're not going to go half-speed at anything we do. You want that motor tuned up. You know, mm-hmm. you hear the term, got a good motor on them. You got some has got motors. Yes, sir. No, don't quit. Um, <laughs> All right. That's, that's, we've seen it. And they've got, there's some good skilled people there. Yeah. You know, again, quarterbacks have struggled a little bit just because all the all the new learning and new yeah. plays and learning to them. And we've tried to simplify and, and people yeah. will see Thursday night, Thursday afternoon. You know, we're not going to have a wide open playbook. Man, we've tried to get these guys just to learn some base things, some mm-hmm. base fundamentals. But we'll be, we're better when, we're better now than we were a year ago at this time because, mm. you know, we had to do all this in the fall last year with our yeah. freshmen. Yeah. And they still competed very well. Freshman team did very well. Didn't they? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. But mm-hmm. um, Well, let's, let's turn our attention. I think from the spring standpoint, you know, we've got an update on your team, you know, just a general overview of them. Thursday night, Meridian, 5 o'clock, weather permitting. Yeah. You know, we'll see how that works out. But now, let's turn our attention to the varsity. You got, uh, we got the varsity spring practice. Give us your schedule okay. on what's happening with the varsity. Well, varsity, spring. I'm glad you mentioned it. So, varsity, we will start May the 2nd, Marshall. May the 2nd with varsity. And now, we're full pads Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday will be a, a big weight room day, a big film study day, um, be a walkthrough day. I feel and through experience, Marshall, that helps us be fresher for the full pad days. I remember we used to go full pad ten days in a row. Yeah, you know that that was that was tough, and I and I and I like that. But with the concussion protocols and things like that, it's hard to do that every day. But anyway, that's what we got going on. And now we will end, uh, Marshall. We will end with a spring game at Pearl. I want people to know we're playing Poplarville and Bay Springs. Okay which are two wing T teams, which my staff will remind me, there's really nothing to help us get ready for the spread teams we play. <laughs> but we will end on May 20th. Look, it's at Pearl River at the junior college. Okay, you know that college. It's not at Popperville High School. Yeah. So we're playing them in the college stadium down there at Pearl River. So I'm excited for that. That's a pretty nice stadium. I'm excited for that for our team. And what we'll, date is that, Coach? That's on the 20th. Okay, May the 20th. Mm-hmm. Is there a time for that? We hadn't said it yet because okay. I don't know if he's going to, you know, usually six, but it depends on how he wants to do JV. And, yeah. you know, when we're host and when we're home, I can set our time when I'm traveling. We yeah. we hadn't really got that far and discussed time. I'm sure it'll be around six, seven o'clock. Okay. And, okay. Um, that'll be a good experience. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, How's this? How's this going to match up with baseball? I mean, we got a pretty good baseball team. They looking to play off probably. We do. We all. Let me tell you. We always play this thing as late as we possibly can. And if they miss a few days, they miss a few days. But we want them to be able to to play and enjoy them playing. You know, it'd be crazy if I sit there and said, "Okay, in April we got spring football, and y'all got to be here if you're going to play." I'd probably lose more kids than I'd gain from that. Yeah. Plus, I've had two that's that's multi sport athlete. They they play another sport. They you know, you can't serve two masters. Yeah. You know, so we want them to go play and, and enjoy playing. And, again, enjoy being a multi-sport athlete. Yeah. And when that's over, you know, you come back to us. So, you know, usually a lot of your skilled players play a lot of play a lot of baseball. You yeah. know, I know our quarterbacks are over there right now. Yeah. Um, I know um, we've, got, we've got several guys over there now. So, you know, you like them to play. And I know it's at the end of the year, but you want to play and let them get that over with. You don't want them to have to do that during or before their season because they're looking forward to having a good bait. You know, yeah. I wouldn't let football players during the season do another spring practice for another sport. So yeah. you kind of want to extend that courtesy, that professional courtesy to your players and to the coaches that are involved. So yeah. we'll get them guys, hey, I want us to get used to winning around here. And they get used to winning. They step right over here and we win. And then we win. We go right to bat. It's just a circle. You know, success breeds success. And I'm a real big believer Amen. in that. And you get used to winning. No matter what we do, that WC is on our chest. We want to win. Mm-hmm. Well, Coach, I tell you what, uh, time has about gotten away from us. We 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 pretty much I think tied out everything. We got our fall. We got our spring uh, schedules tied out. What we'll do uh, next week, we just may start back with our fall schedule and talk a few other things. But 
for now. The horn is blowing, so we got to go. Remember to follow us on Facebook at War Eagle Football and on YouTube at Wayne County High School War Eagle Football. And let us encourage you to join the team of supporters. We, we're going to, you know, we talked about how you could do that a little bit. So find a way to support the team, not only, you know, monetarily, you know, any way that you can. Message us on Facebook and we'll share ways for you to be involved in this program. The fun is coming, so get on board. But for now, War Eagle Football, Coach Hankins and myself, we out. We out. Step into the extreme. Extreme guns, that is. Located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generac generators. Circle C now sells Exmark mowers with full service and parts for Exmark. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located at 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. Thanks for listening to Wayne County Football Show, brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank.